this group are all adults on the autistic spectrum. They have Asperger's syndrome. And many people believe that if you have Asperger's syndrome or an autistic spectrum disorder, you're unable to create. So working with the City of York Council and Arts Action, we've been working for a while to challenge this preconception. And the guys are just so excited. They've had this tag tool where they've been able to work together and come along and really show, look, we are creative, look what we can do. So it's been literally life-changing for some of them. We've got people here this evening who won't look at you when they're talking to you. They're afraid to pick up a pencil and draw in case they get it wrong. And yet, they've stood here in public display with each other and they've done this. It's terrific. They will never forget what this has done for them. I think they're all walking three inches taller this evening. And they'll carry that because not everybody has done this. So when they're worried about, can I leave the house and get the bus? I've stood in front of hundreds of people and I've drawn on a wall with light. Of course I can catch the bus. It's tremendous. It's been a real challenge for them. What we did was we went to their club where they meet and let them work on their terms for a couple of weeks. And then I've brought one of them down every night this week to see Tag Tool in action. And so they feel comfortable with the setup. But they've done it. The idea of, oh, I can't do this, very quickly disappeared, so just look what I've done. They've liked it and they've enjoyed it enough to be able to help each other. They're up there now giving tips to each other what you should do and can do. It's wonderful. For the group, it, it is communication, where they have difficulty in maybe putting a string of words together or expressing a feeling. They can pick up a pencil, they've used crayons, the tag tool, and they can let you know what they're thinking. It's a message, and it's there for everybody to see. This is such a boost to the confidence. These young men all feel that they've really done something that many people standing here this evening can't do. So when people are busy saying, oh, you can't because you have a disability, well, they can and they know it, and this is giving them that, absolutely. Bristol Drawing School is a not-for-profit arts venue and education facility. It aims to encourage and nurture the art of drawing, not only as an art form in its own right, but as an essential part of the creative process. Staff Mentored Art and Power, a group which helps participants who are disabled or deaf and people who face social exclusion to achieve their creative potential. One workshop explored different drawing techniques and materials. Using inspiration from nature and seasonal subjects, participants experimented with different methods of drawing. Initially working small scale, then very large, working from observation and then imagination, the drawings became increasingly abstract. The Dilla War Pavilion in Bexhill extended its big draw theme through outreach workshops with older people who have problems with mobility. The workshop activities were designed to be fun and to develop people's creativity. One woman, who said initially that she couldn't draw since having a stroke, commented that it was lovely to realise she could still hold a pencil and make it do what she wanted. We have a big site in Penrith that's been ripe for development for a long time and um, there's been various plans for it and because of the economic recession a lot of the funding was pulled and Sainsbury's came in with a plan to extend their store and make it a lot bigger and people are suddenly realising they don't want this. They feel there's an awful lot of problems with the plans and there's a lot of strong opinion out there and I think people are feeling that they haven't been given the opportunity to express what they really, really feel about it. They feel this is going to finish the town off. So when the opportunity came with the big draw, we thought this would be a superb 
time to get people to draw little squares, like these ones, with what they liked about Penrith on one square and perhaps what they hoped for the future for Penrith on the other square. So we're trying to use the medium of drawing to give people a voice and we've been amazed by how when people start doing a bit of drawing or talking about it, the floodgates open and there's a lot of strong feeling out there and um, drawing is giving people the opportunity to suddenly be able to express what they really, really feel. Are we any rubbers? Yes, we have rubbers. They're too long for hangman's nooses, aren't they? <laughs> is that what you want? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Are oh, they specific? No, I shouldn't ask that. Yeah. <laughs> I think they'll know what it is. <laughs> and I, I think there might have been three stories on there. I better put them in. <laughs> right. Hmm. Nine, ten, eleven. Oh, yes, we'll have enough. You'll have enough for news. <laughs> <laughs> not, not considering the bother we've had. One lady drew a gibbet, <laughs> which is where she wanted to see a lot of the councillors go. And I do apologise if any councillors are watching. <laughs> I'm not getting involved. But uh, she felt really, really strongly, and that's what she drew. So you can be brave enough to draw something that you might say, but when you put it in a drawing, it has a lot more power. And she felt she could do it as well, which was, was good. I've been surprised by the, the huge amount of opinion and also the complexity of the issues. And it isn't as simple as a case of, we're going to build this and it's going to be like that. There's far more to take on board than I think has been looked at. And certainly by doing this, that's given me that idea. I think there could be a huge amount of wonderful things that could be done with this development and that, that have not been looked at. It's all just been down to hard economics, which of course are important. But the long-term future of the town, I think, is, is something that needs to be really, really focused on. And we've got little sketches and we've got quite complicated drawings. So it is sort of opening up a, a huge amount of emotion and strong feelings and some wonderful ideas. And just looking at all the ideas that people have had, I think, hey, we could run Penrith. <laughs> we could bring a fantastic new Penrith into existence. Harborough Artist Cluster mentored local Art Foundation students, giving them hands-on experience of planning and running creative workshops for adults with disabilities or learning difficulties. In the printmaking sessions, Participants drew on polystyrene tiles and printed from them with block printing inks. As staff and service users became more confident, layering and colour mixing were introduced. Adults with profound learning difficulties enjoyed this activity. Drawing encouraged observation, experimentation and collaboration and built confidence in individual expression. Participants made maps of the town centre, focusing on past, present and imagined buildings and people for the big street. Other workshops helped support staff at the Roman Way Day Centre to develop Photoshop and PowerPoint skills to be able to create a virtual tour of Market Harborough. The key Photoshop concept of layers was made tangible by participants drawing onto acetates to create images of their town centre, supported by one-to-one -one basic Photoshop tuition on placing and manipulating images. The Icon Gallery in Birmingham and Erdington Forum developed workshops with various groups to explore drawing afresh and to challenge conventional notions of drawing. Each workshop session was different in its content, reflecting the diversity of the participants. There were arts practitioners, parents and teachers, and newly arrived immigrant mothers. Sessions made use of warm-up drawing techniques to create a relaxed, informal environment. Inhibitions about a perceived inability to draw broke down as each group collectively made wall and floor-based drawings using a wide variety of mixed media. In every case, confidence increased, participants became less inhibited to draw, encouraging and supporting each other. 
In their first art activity with adults, Manchester Museum and the In Touch Volunteer Program used drawing to enable people to explore parts of the plant collection not on public view, as well as sharing knowledge of how botany collections are stored. The intention was that by discovering how artists have made work at the museum in the past, participants would be encouraged to adopt an artist's approach and develop individual ways to record and present the collections. Participants were invited to select an object that was meaningful for them. Each person devised their own method for choosing and arranging objects from inside the herbarium where the botany collections are stored. They recorded their choices with quick sketches and these drawings were then reorganised and developed to best communicate their ideas. Lots of tiny little views all around, looking out the window, or some more specific views inside of things like the chairs, or some really quite abstract things like roof joists and things. Basically looking through the viewfinders, our very primitive viewfinders, which are uh, sort of um, tubes from large ones, small ones, kitchen roll size right through to carpet roll size. Park worked with Quercus, an artist collective, to develop a drawing project inspired by the dilapidated kitchen garden behind the museum. Past, present and future representations of the garden were developed with adults from the Nelson Trust and from Magic Bean, an educational support centre for adults with special needs. The aim was to make drawing an all-inclusive and accessible activity and to change the minds of some who began by saying, I can't draw. The idea was to produce images of the garden using seven different ways to draw the scene. Artists introduced a range of processes such as sketchbook and photographic research, wax rubbing, clay pressing, printing, collage and mark making with found natural materials. There was much laughter and enjoyment. One participant commented, I thought this would be rubbish, I can't believe how much I've enjoyed today. The National Museums Liverpool created a series of drawing workshops at the Walker Art Gallery to encourage people to look more closely at some of the sculptures on display. The focus was on creating opportunities for adults to view the artworks in a calm and contemplative environment. Participants learned new approaches to drawing, improved skills of concentration, observation and analysis and developed greater confidence in drawing. 
Some children joined in too. Everyone was offered advice and instruction on drawing techniques to analyse the artworks and to record their observations. It was good fun. They could select individual works or groups of sculpture to draw. Everyone chose their favourite. The October Gallery in London ran training workshops for adult learners. These were women from the Somali community group B2B. Young people from Action Space, which provides visual arts projects for people with learning disabilities, and October Gallery volunteers. The aim was to support each group in planning, coordinating and running their own Big Draw event. Focusing on accessible themes of community and environmental awareness, the project aimed to introduce the gallery to these groups as an inspirational and welcoming venue. The training inspired them with ideas taken from the gallery exhibitions. It increased participants' confidence as well as their art and facilitation skills. We're at Primer Art Centre, which is a small independent art centre in the middle of the Cotswold in Gloucestershire. We've been doing the big draw this year and our theme kind of hinged on the fact that it's Mr Darwin's 200th birthday, is drawing life-size animals. floor completely covered in paper, everyone bottomed in the air, kind of legs and elbows and kind of everyone jostling to find their little space to feel comfortable to be working in. Yeah, so smaller children kind of drawn to be able to draw things really big. We've got this great elephant behind me for example and yeah, it's just, it's just really inspiring, it's such a simple idea. I've been working with a number of adult groups throughout the county. It's a scheme called Artlift which is a scheme to put artists into doctor surgeries. People who attend these art lift sessions may be suffering from mild depression, they may have suffered a bereavement recently, um, they may have no end of, uh, of, of personal problems. Some people with chronic pain, a whole range of things, and a lot of them not normally confident in a large public setting. So it was important for me to go to each of the sessions and kind of sow the seed, hopefully kind of um, interest them and kind of hook them into the idea that yes, they may feel like they, they want to come and join in. And I was really pleased. We had a really good turnout of people from not just local, from a lot of the surrounding surgeries um, come over and stay, and stay, you know, which was amazing. So a whole bunch of adults kind of started off thinking, well, I'll go for the sofa, and then this paper kind of appeared in front of them, so, oh my goodness, I better start drawing then. And then before we knew it, there was a kind of whole gaggle of, these, of, of adults kind of around this table, and everyone kind of jostling for their elbow room to be able to get in and um, put in no, their penneth worth no and drawing one. an insect you know it's small so again so you're not too on show which I think is just really important um, just to kind of entice people and once you've done one and oh, okay I'll have a go at another one so that was really nice that's what it's all about just helping people to realize their potential and just how bringing together drawing is and just being creative and just getting your hands dirty and keep on drawing the big draw isn't just about October, it's about the whole year and it's about your whole life and realising the, the benefits of getting in there and kind of getting over yourself and just being creative. SpaceX, a small publicly funded contemporary art gallery in Exeter, collaborated with Form Concepts Collective. At Forest Park, they wanted to engage people in a drawing activity linked with the landscape, so created a family workshop on making and using charcoal. Families spent the afternoon exploring the qualities of the medium and experimenting with how it could be used through a series of drawing activities. Everyone enjoyed the social campfire environment. A drawing workshop invited people to share the breakfast at the SpaceX Gallery to experiment drawing with coffee, chocolate, cinnamon and icing sugar 
this unusual event attracted young and old to the gallery. Further drawing activities related to social space were organised in Plymouth in collaboration with the BBC's Big Screen to engage shoppers in a large-scale participatory drawing activity to explore movement and dance, focusing on drawing as process rather than product. SpaceX mentored a local graffiti art group responding to a call from residents of Holden Hill Traveller's site. After the artist had demonstrated various spray paint techniques, people tried them out for themselves, decorating their homes or working on canvases. There was a strong social aspect to this activity, with people getting to know their neighbours better and drinking many cups of tea. West Sussex County Council's Big Draw workshops provided drawing opportunities for young and old. One workshop for older people involved creating an autumnal collage using leaves. Pens and inks were brought into play to enhance the lines, shapes and colours. Concentration and careful work resulted in beautiful drawings. Leaves were arranged to form wonderful